All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to draw Lewis structures for polyatomic ions. It's not very much different than regular Lewis structures. So we'll start by finding the budget for SO3, 2 minus. So the start, we know S has a budget of 6. 3 O's is 6 times 3 is 18. So there would be 24 electrons normally um, in this situation. However, we have a negative 2 charge in this molecule. We know electrons are negative, so that means we actually have an additional 2 electrons in our budget. So we actually have 26 electrons with, to use here. Again, we're going to start off with the central atom, usually the one that's alone, in this case S. And then we're just going to bond each of the O's to that. And we're going to start by trying to fill in and make them all obey the octet rule. So as I said, we start by getting these up to 8. Okay, each of these are up to 8. We check our budget. So far we've used 24. We count all these dots and lines. And our budget was 26. So we have enough to give S its remaining two dots. Everything is satisfying the octet rule. Our budget is satisfied. The only thing that doesn't really work is our preferred bonds, right? O usually likes to form two bonds. It's not getting that in this structure. S usually likes to form two. It's not getting that. Most of the rules about how many bonds a molecule would like go out the window for polyatomic ions. So we don't pay as much attention to that. The last thing we do is we put this whole thing in brackets, and we write 2 minus outside it to indicate that this molecule is a charge. Because if we just looked at this normally, we'd say there's too many electrons in there because we'd think it was SO3. So this 2 minus is important to, to differentiate between that and regular SO3. Okay. Here's CO3, 2 minus, same deal. Carbon has a valence electrons of 4. Again, 3 O's is 18, so you would have 22, but it has a negative 2 charge, so our real budget is 24. We put C in the middle, we bond each O to the C, fill in the dots, get us up to 8. And at this point, when we count, we're going to only have 24. We're at our budget. So we are, our budget's 24, we've drawn 24, but look, carbon is not satisfied. It's octet rule, it only has six. So again, we have to kind of cheat. We have to get those electrons from somewhere. We're going to move them from one of our oxygens to make a double bond. So let's say I pick this oxygen, I move these in, and I'm going to make a double bond out of those electrons. And this is what I would have. That would be a final picture here. I'd put brackets around it, and I'd write 2 minus. And this is the Lewis structure for CO3, 2 minus. However, one thing is, why did I pick this particular oxygen for the double bond? You know, why wouldn't I have picked this one and another one? So this structure implies that carbon prefers one oxygen over another, which in reality it doesn't. So one thing I'm supposed to do is draw all the possible structures of this. In other words, I need to demonstrate that oxygen, that carbon is not really playing favorites with um, its double bond. And so I draw what are called resonance structures. So what this means is that the real Lewis structure is somewhere in between these structures. It, like, it almost like it flickers. So it's not like there's any one correct structure. All of these structures, it's kind of like an average of these. And it's a little tedious, um, but it's something you really need to do. Whenever we have double bonds, and it's, you know, there appears to be no rhyme or reason to where you put the double bond, we would draw these resonance structures with these arrows between them, showing that the real structure is somewhere in between these three. It's, like, it's almost like there's a bond in a third. Um, between each carbon and oxygen. So that's just something to think about when you draw these. So that is Lewis structures for polyatomic ions. Until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.